Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living and retirement worth having. I say this in every audio cast and every podcast interview, but I haven't been doing many of those lately. I've been living in an unusual way. I've literally been traveling by walking. I want you to think about how we used to do this in old times. We literally didn't have cars for every single person or every single teenager. We actually had to walk a lot. We had trains and we had bicycles and we had carpools. And through that, we produced relationships. There's a lovely film about number crunching where these incredible African-American women saved NASA a lot of money with their mathematical skills. We also saw how they interacted with each other in their carpools. That's my point. Movies provide us incredible storylines and great information about real technology, real things, and openly real life of other people. The problem is the life of other people is not for us to opinion. This is something that Christians are really struggling with right now. They're so struggling that they're violating federal law in their pursuit of their own opinions on other people's lives. Let's talk about this briefly because I don't have a lot of time. Every audio file that I've made that was of incredible intellectual value and intellectual property value to me has literally been destroyed and deleted by the stalkers of my life. I'm telling you this point blank so that if you find a video cut off, you'll really recognize that someone has violated federal law by holding on to my passcodes to my lawful channel and has violated my rights and literally ruined my property, my intellectual property. You see, intellectual property is something that the Lord gifts to a person. It's not something that we do remotely and completely on our own. It is something that the Lord bequeaths to us. And openly, that's okay. The reality is that when people think they are really thinking on their own, that is not true. There was another wonderful sort of little film that made it about the four emotions in a mind. It was sort of a cartoon, sort of an animation, sort of a playmation or claymation. I can't recall exactly. My sibling wanted to see it and I went with her and I sort of suffered through it. And I have to say, I literally suffered through it because I lived that in everyday life. I literally have lots of angelic help is really quite truthful for my life. It might not be truthful in your life to the point that it is in my life, and I can only compare notes with you. I simply know that when I listen carefully, when I put life about other people's interests and other people's goals, I'm much happier in my service to them. I'm also more content because I'm not being put in a play of sorts. And I'm openly able to say that because a lot of people have tried to test me and most of them sort of fail. I believe it's because of my love of film, my love of cinema, and my love of just knowing the natural flow of things that has allowed me to predict, anticipate, and be prepared for every play that I'm put in. And usually the liars of the land slip. They slip with information that they should not have. You see, when God aligns people on a path, it's very beautiful. It's very unique. You get signs for them. Like, for example, I just met a lovely young woman. And really, and I mean lovely. She's lovely in her soul because her parents loved her well. She's lovely because she comes from the farm country and because she has an innocence that's beautiful. She's also a mature girl in a lot of ways, intellectually astute. And I say this because I learned what her signs were when I talked with her those signs have started to show up in my life. And I can't help the fact that now all of a sudden, this little beekeeper who sort of made an impression upon my heart is now sending little bees to buzz around me. And that's sort of comical to me. I just don't want to be stung and that's okay too. We have some problems locally with the local inability for people to protect the land. People are putting in shrubs, they're putting in all this mulch, but they're not thinking about the quality. And in that mulch is coming in all sorts of ants, all sorts of biting ants, and all sorts of spiders that really don't belong in Indiana. We have to really pay attention to who we're letting do our lawn care. Now, I've sort of come off track a little bit on purpose because I want you to be paying attention to what's meaningful for you. There are parks that we go and we play in with our children, but we're not thinking about what's running around the grass, what's coming down from the trees. And openly, I've had several of those sort of poisonous, biting spiders come down on me when I was literally talking with a lovely lady in the park at a picnic bench. I didn't know what they were at the time, but I learned shortly thereafter what they were, and I thought, oh my gosh, thank God they were little. 
I can't imagine if they were large. Now, I'm only saying this out there so that the people who care for the land will start to pay attention to what they're doing. You see, if they're not master gardeners, if they're just workers at hand, they don't know one type of insect from another. They're not entomologists or etymologists, and I tend to get those two terms confused. One is the study of Latin Greek derivatives, the other is the study of insects, and hey, you do the math. It's been a long time since I had that class in high school. But what I'm saying to you, literally, is that we have a plan in our life, that the Lord God of Most High mother and father of all the realms, has made a life plan for every soul and every child that they put that soul within. That soul has a code, as James Hillsman said in his wonderful book called The Soul's Code. I hope I pronounced his name right. But openly, it talks about how the soul's code must be satisfied. It's sort of along the lines of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, for those of you who are into the science, that in Maslow's hierarchy of needs, we have fundamental things that our bodily functions desperately need. There are four or five things that are often considered ADLs, adult daily living type of activities, that we are checked on as we grow old into our elder years. And those things can diminish and be uh, lost over the course of illness. But I'm not digressing without reason. What I literally mean is that when we're in life and we play a game with someone else's life, where we think we are in control of their life or their body or their cellular health or anything of their property, we are literally insulting God. You see, everything of my property is something that the Lord gifted me through my own hard efforts and work to produce a life for myself, my spouse or significant other, and our child who I parented from literally a very young age in elementary school all the way through to adulthood underneath my own finances with no one else's true help. I sometimes got supportive letters from someone, but they never literally paid the bill fully. They might have loaned us money, but we paid them back in a lot of ways. Now, when I talk about this, we're talking about real life finances. We're talking about real life money management. We're talking about things that my ex-spouse did extremely well, and she always managed our things as she would have in the foreign land in which we lived together first. The reality is I'm talking about this because when we're equally yoked in many ways, it doesn't mean we're equally yoked in every way. But when we find that one that we're fully equally yoked to, that we know within our soul we are fully equally a match, it's hard to let go of that thought. You see, there's also things that the Lord does to say, this is the one. And literally, in the case of the one that I love now, as opposed to the one I loved before for 20 some years, that the one I love now, the signs are off the charts. I literally get those initials, I get those pings, I get those animal signs, I get all the things that I've learned from going to different courses that the Lord led me to, to totally point to her life into mine. How do you convince someone of that? Well, you have code words with God. You have things that a person must accomplish to prove that God has sent them to you. I guarantee you I'm wearing some shirts that I would have never selected for myself if the Lord hadn't said, you need to put these on right now. I'm like, okay. But the reality is you have to be willing to listen. You have to be willing to hear. You have to be willing to recognize that your life is your life and your life alone that your soul is your soul and your soul alone, that how you manage where your soul goes and what part of your soul you protect within your human body, that's completely up to you. But how you handle yourself and how you move yourself through the life of other people is something else entirely. Something I find incredibly comical is that I'll be sitting outside a buddy's workplace waiting to talk to him after he takes his shift break or does whatever, and some woman will drive up and try and give me a pizza. First of all, I have allergies. I can't eat a lot of pizza. Second of all, it makes me lethargic, which is the gluten in it. And third of all, I just generally don't like pizza anymore. I probably had way too much in college. I am not a connoisseur of pizza. But every time someone thinks they should feed me, they go and buy me food as if they have right to control what I'm going to take into my body. That is unlawful. It's somewhat offensive. It's like saying, I'm in control of you. And I, this lady did this to me today. I'm like, I've never met you before in my life. Why are you driving up to me trying to handle me a Coke bottle, which I can't drink, and a pizza that I'm not going to eat, which I've already ate lunch already, thank you very much, and you think that I should actually receive it for you with grace and dignity. Now, I always compliment them and tell them they're being really lovely, but I just want to smack them across the face to say, who do you literally think you are? I don't know you at all. Why would I take total uh, food from a complete stranger? 
You see, it's an offense. It's saying, I know what your body needs, really. I've never met you before in your, my life. I've had a lot of people try to feed me chocolate chip cookies and I'm allergic to chocolate. So you see, there's a problem when you think you know what someone else needs. The same can be said for the religious light who are trying to control every little aspect of our physical health care, our intellectual opportunities, and openly the people stalking my life have literally destroyed most of my religious artifacts for my altar in which I pray to the Lord. And that's immoral, not to mention illegal, federally. So when I talk on these issues and I share my life story across my audio channel, it's my lawful right to do it. I've been put in many a plays with some lovely actors, but you know what? Most of them slip with information about my life they should have never had in a million years. And there's a difference between someone who's aligned with someone that God puts on your path for that alignment versus the people who pretend in the various agencies to be in alignment with you. And I messed up the other day. I totally messed up. One of the players came up, did a beautiful job, but I just finished eating. I hadn't quite gotten my mind back in the game, and I missed gifting her what I should have gifted her. So I'm holding on to that beautiful gift I made to give to her in response to her generosity because she knew I needed to eat. Now, in life, we have moments of time to really tell people how we feel. I have literally tried thousands of times maybe more, 10,000 I know, for my first YouTube channel, to tell someone that I love her for her soul. Now let's talk about that for a moment. So many religious right people are making things about the body that they have the right to tell a woman what she can do with her body. Who gave them that right? They're total strangers. They have no right to say what's going on with that woman's life. They have no right to say what she has the financial capabilities to handle. They have no right to do anything like that whatsoever. And openly, that's the illness in human beings that human beings literally think they have the right to play God in someone's life. How incredibly offensive. Do you know what that person's financial status is? Do you know whether that, that person has a room enough, large enough, to handle a child? Does that person have resources in the bank to purchase all the little items that are required to bring a child into this world, from the strollers we need, to the seats in the car, to the diapers that go out the wazoo, because we don't use cloth ones anymore, somewhat thankfully, somewhat unthankfully, our landfills are full of a lot of crap, with, and I just say that loosely with a little tongue in cheek, but the reality is, who gives you the right to say one thing about that unknown woman's body? You don't have the little right. The Lord knows what he makes. And I've proposed this many times because of the channeling that I'm capable of doing, that the Lord knows how to save a soul. If a child is not to be brought into this world, that Lord can move that child into another being, that soul into another opportunity, or an opportunity just a little later in that woman's life. The religious right is out of control about the human body. They know.